Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today. Once again, to do Tokyo Ghoul episode reviews. This is going to be Tokyo Ghoul episode 3. Now, obviously, the episode is not on Crunchyroll. So you need to go on your favorite search engine. Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, and Tokyo Ghoul in the search bar and Fly Like Eagles. So, that being said, this episode mainly information now there are events that are occurring behind the scenes that don't involve the main character Kaneki at this point in time he's just getting accustomed to the way ghouls operate and how they try and blend in with modern day society and humans and how they have other means of acquiring food and preventing their hunger from going berserk means of satiating their appetite and i do gotta point out i do gotta point this out like and i understand i understand full well that kaneki at this point in time he's being thrown into this new environment and everything is to say the least a little bit strange and surprising but there are so many times in this episode where kaneki just freaks the fuck out <laughs> I'm like, dude, calm the fuck down. Relax. Take it easy. Go in the corner, smoke a blunt, and just chill. Just, you know, bring it down a few pegs. Jeez. Every three minutes in this shit. Dude, whoa. Whoa. Kaneki. My God. Holy shit. Relax. My goodness. He needs a massage with a happy ending. He lives in Japan. It should be easy as fuck. Let's go. Shit. Do it off screen since in the States it'd be illegal to show that. In Japan, I don't think so. Because I think, no, I, it is. Like the average legal age is like 13. So what the fuck? Whatever. Just do you. Regardless. Regardless. Moving on. All right. Uh, <laughs> also, very important the episode. Character introductions. And titles like Dove and the Box Carriers, which basically those two titles are given to the CCG Ghoul Investigators. And so let me start there, okay? When it comes to the CCG Ghoul Investigators, you have two main ones that are right now in the 20th Ward. And the 20th Ward is like on Teku territory. And like other ghoul territory. It's considered to be the most peaceful of the territories. I believe so. Or at least a peaceful territory in general. But because... And there, apparently there are three main... Like big time ghouls in this territory. They still believe that Rize is alive. We're not too sure. Whether or not they think that Rize is alive or dead. Again, not confirmed or not. Meaning CCG. The Anteku, the manager, the old guy, he knows that Rize's dead. But whether the CCG know about that, not, again, we don't know. So it's Rize, the binge eater. Then there's Jason, Voorhees with the wrench. And finally, and by the way, his real name is Yomori. And finally, there is some gourmet guy. Like, they call him, like, like, like Toriko, pretty much. Like, apparently Toriko is in this bitch, and, and I don't know what's going on. But I think it's the guy in the red suit or tux. I think he's the gourmet guy that they're talking about. Because they mentioned when Mato was walking in the hallway. And he, after the meeting was over, you have Mato talking to, I forgot his name, his partner. Some dude who apparently graduated top of his class from some academy or whatever. He's talking, he's looking at the window, talking about, talking about the 20th Ward. And how he mentioned three people. He mentioned first the gourmet guy. Then mentioned Rize, the binge eater. And finally Jason. Jason apparently is actually like more well known. I think that Jason is like a ghoul that works for the government. That may be stretched. I'm not too sure about that. But I'm again we'll see later on. That's my assumption but I could be wrong about that. And regardless of that. There's a, so there's a third large threat. Or there's a third very powerful ghoul within this 20th district. And it is the, the, the gourmet ghoul Toriko. So, thing here is that, that to me I think is fascinating because Rize 
and Jason. Rize being like the bigger of the three since she was more relevant to the story. Jason was already introduced in the first in the first few minutes of the damn series. He was there with his wrench, which by the way, the wrench apparently was made by a doctor named Fue Gucci, right? And Fue Gucci's wife and kid, the kid, I remember her name being Hinami. She right there right now in Antiku. So, and apparently Fue Gucci, his name was also mentioned by two of the ghouls who were talking to one another after one of the ghouls had escaped, or he believed he escaped the CCG guys and Mato, but wound up being bait for another ghoul. So, there was one ghoul who was somehow cut in some weird way. And instead of having his head cut off, it was just his hands, like his arms and his torso and his arms. And he met up with another ghoul, and they were talking. And this ghoul was in pain, because he had like these giant cuts across his uh, body, uh, across his hand and torso. And then the other ghoul says, well, why don't you go see Dr. Fuiguchi? So it looks like Dr. Fuiguchi is a ghoul doctor. Like, either he himself is a ghoul. I know, I'm pretty sure that he's a ghoul that helps other ghouls when it comes to their medical issues. And he can also make these weird ghoul medical devices that apparently are made out of some unique metal. And apparently that wrench was a ghoul medical device that belonged to Yamori, a.k.a. Jason. So, that's fascinating. It's very fascinating. Because, like, why would a ghoul... Like, why would someone like Jason need, like, a ghoul medical device? Like, does it help him kill other ghouls that are in his territory or something like that? Like, again, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. That's my assumption, but it's not confirmed just yet. But either way, thing here is that when it comes to this whole situation with Mato and that whole group, they're on the prowl right now, and they're trying to find out what's going on in the 12th Ward. And... It is believed by, I think, the head of the, of the CCG, like the guy who's talking and like the front monitor, him. I'm pretty sure that he was hinting that there was a lot of ghoul activity in other wards. It wasn't just like the 20th ward. A lot of other wards are seeing a lot of ghoul activity. And their main goal is not peace. There's, there's no peace. No, no. Their main goal, because I'm pretty sure that they could organize something where, okay, fine. So, like, we'll give you, like, let's say, this many suicide victims if you promise not to kill any actual living human beings. Okay, like, they can work something out. But the point here is that they don't want to have harmony between the ghouls and regular humans. No. The CCG's job, or at least this branch, whatever, their job is to eradicate ghouls from Tokyo, period. Period. There is no, there is no negotiations. There are no treaties nothing it's we will eliminate we will eliminate the scum and the scum are the ghoul and the ghoul obviously are on their you know they're, they're on watch obviously and that's why you had motto he had no qualms killing these ghouls he had no qualms no nothing like scum fodder not a big deal i'm gonna come here i'm gonna use these ghouls to find out information about this wretch and jason and the binge eater and that's it so that was all fascinating then you have this character interaction. The main character interaction that we see here is Kaneki and Toka. That's getting better. That's somehow getting better. Because Kaneki, he's actually starting to adapt to his environment at hand. And, of course, with the help of the manager, the manager explains how you, how you can eat regular human food. They can't digest it. Because if, if they digest it, and this is something very fascinating. Apparently, if a ghoul were to digest regular human food, it would be bad for their health. Fascinating. And how you have to swallow the food whole. Not taste it, just swallow it whole. You chew ten times as if like you're actually chewing on it. And you make the sound of chewing. And later on, you throw it up so you don't digest the food. And that's how apparently you can actually operate in a regular human you know, setting. But you're a ghoul. Now, but then Kaneki does have that issue too, where Kaneki, that he can't control his left eye. So whenever he's hungry, his left eye will automatically just go black. So that's a bad part for him. But he can, 
I think after some time he'll overcome that. I believe so. That's my honest opinion. And then we find out that well, the manager gives him like these cubes, and these cubes have something inside of it that help him that helps satiate his hunger, which is good. But he's adapting this to this environment, and he's having good character interaction towards the end with Toka. At the beginning of the episode, it, there's still a lot of friction. That's very obvious. But towards the middle and end of the episode, once he tries to find out more about uh, Hinami and her situation, and once he tries to actually take it upon himself to help the other ghouls around him, then it looks like, like for example, when he was teaching uh, Hinami about the words in the book and the kanji, and what, and what the kanji meanings are, and so on and so forth, and how he was acting like a big brother to her, you can see clearly... Tolka, she's listening in on them, and she's smiling. So, you can clearly see that the character interaction there is, the friction is less. And it kind of is that way at the end of the episode, where at the end of the episode, before the guy comes in there, it's, we have Hinami, she's saying hi to everyone, like Onichan, like big bro, hi, and then, you know, hi Hinami. And then she goes up the stairs, you can see Tolka smiling, smiling towards... Kaneki then says, get back to work, dummy. So, their friendship is slowly growing. That's obvious. And then, we have Kaneki being the older bro, if you would. For Hinami, who at this point in time can't be with her father, because her father is probably doing stuff for Jason. And Jason is a major threat to probably not only humans, but also ghouls as well. Otherwise... His wife and daughter wouldn't be in Antigua in the first place if Jason wasn't a threat to ghouls. Just saying. And finally, I do want to point out a few things here and there. Again, we do get to see the scavenging of the ghouls and how instead of actually killing ghoul and instead of actually killing humans, they can just scavenge for the suicide for the yeah for the people who committed suicide. And also, we get to see this guy called Yomo. Who is a part of Anteku, a silent type. He's the one who got the body. The guy who committed suicide, he got the body. And finally, we get to see Uta, who apparently is a guy who makes these masks. And according to what is stated, you don't want the CCG guys seeing your face. So you have to wear a mask to hide your face for some odd reason. Now, it probably does involve the CCG powers, because their powers are abnormal. Because they have the suitcases that they seem to use as weapons. But at the same time, when the ghouls were cut by the CCG members, it looked, it looked as if like, the air itself was cutting the ghouls. So there's something going on there. And I'm pretty sure it does involve facial, re facial recognition. So, if their powers somehow involve facial recognition, that means that hiding your face will prevent their powers from working on you. Very simple. And Uta, he's the creator of these masks that they use to probably either fend off or bypass the CCG ghoul investigator's powers. Or technology, whatever it is. And finally, Hide. Very perceptive. Hide, at the beginning of the episode... He's leaving on Teku, and he's on the bicycle, and he sees Hinami, and he sees her mom running across in the rain, going into the shop, and I'm pretty sure he knows full well what's going on. He knows full well. Again, it is stated that Hide is perceptive in very weird ways, so I'm pretty sure he knew, like, these two are ghouls, and they're going in there right now. So, that being said, overall, the episode, I did like it a lot. I thought it was good. Yeah, good plus the great. And I will see you guys later, King Line, because it did have very good... No, no, let me... Before I go. It did have, obviously, a lot of story progression. It had a very nice character interaction between Hinami and between... Hinami, Toka, and Kaneki. And then, finally, you do have the good animation, as usual. And there was no need for that much censorship, but they did censor Hinami eating, like, whatever she was eating. I don't know what the fuck. They censored that part out. And... 
I'm still not. I'm, I'm really not a fan of it. I'm really not. But I guess for the good stuff, you're gonna have to read the manga. Probably, yeah, probably. But that being said, overall, you had good animation. Aside from the censorship, you had pretty damn good story progression. Very good story progression. In fact, no, you had great story progression. And then finally, you had pretty damn good character interaction and character development. So overall, episode 80, I'm gonna give it a good plus to great. And I will see you guys later. Rate the video, comment, subscribe. Have a nice day.